Ryan Tannehill had the worst game of his Titans career against the Saints. I know the Bengals playoff game is up there for a lot of people, but you got to keep in mind he at least offset his turnovers in that game with some really nice throws. This performance was just irredeemably bad. He was 16 for 34, zero touchdowns and three interceptions, but he could have easily thrown five or six. And his accuracy was terrible. Tennessee's receivers didn't play great, but when they were open, you couldn't count on Tannehill to get it there accurately. In the aftermath of a loss, I think we're all guilty of trying to assign blame to one person when the reality is usually a lot more nuanced, but I'm comfortable putting this loss on Ryan Tannehill. Not that everyone played a perfect game, but the Titans are 1-0 if they had even below average quarterback play in week one. We're gonna go chronologically looking through all of Tannehill's bad plays. This first one, I really like the play design. Ty J Spears is gonna delay his release to get Lattimore to drift inside and bracket Hopkins and create space for the whole shot. This is a difficult throw, nowhere near his worst play of the day, but he needs to be earlier and put a little bit less air on this. He had a couple interceptions on jump balls to DeAndre Hopkins, and I will say I don't have a problem with Tannehill giving him those 50-50 balls, even if he isn't wide open. The Titans don't have a bunch of elite separators, so to have an explosive of passing game, Tannehill has to be more aggressive than he was last season and at least try to draw some pass interference calls. But he needs to move up in the pocket here so he can at least step into this throw. He has to release it off his back foot and Hopkins doesn't even have a chance to play the ball here. Now there's nobody open and it's third down so this isn't a terrible decision but he's got to give himself space to put this in a safer spot. This next one's a throw and read that Tannehill's been executing since he got to Tennessee. It's play action, max protect, you've got a corner post and a deep over. Nobody picks up Chigakonkwo, so you've got an easy 40 yard gain, but he forces it to Chris Moore, who has a step, but the pass is underthrown and it gets tipped up to Marcus May. This is a bad throw, but the decision is inexcusable. His third interception, I'm actually not sure I blame Tannehill for this. If you watch the video I did on D-Hop, I talked about how he doesn't really win over the top that much anymore. And most vertical routes, if you haven't stacked the receiver by a certain landmark, usually seven to 10 yards, the receiver's gonna cut that off to a back shoulder fade. So on this play, Adebo lands his two-hand punch at the line of scrimmage. Hopkins can't get any separation down the field. And at the moment Tannehill releases the ball, they're at the exact same point vertically. So to me, this is the correct read from Ryan Tannehill to throw this back shoulder but Hopkins extends his route and Adebo falls off and gets an easy interception. Ultimately, this comes down to communication between Hopkins and Tannehill, but I'm gonna give Tannehill a pass for this one. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, and also follow us on all of our social medias. The links to those are in the description. Another nice play design here, they fake outside zone into a flea flicker, Chigakonkwo leaks out down the sideline and Tannehill overthrows him. Right here, they've got an Ohio concept with a go route from NWI and an out route from Hopkins. Again, I was very underwhelmed by Hopkins' ability to separate in this game. The Saints have one of the best cornerback rooms in the league, but he really seems to be lacking the ability to get out of his breaks quickly. But throwing this deep out from the far hash, the ball has to be out of his hand before the receiver breaks because there isn't much space to work with. And the longer you wait, the tighter this angle gets for the corner to break on the ball. Good job by Hopkins to break up the pass, but this could have easily been an interception. On this play, they're running a keeper. Really good job by Tim Kelly of putting this flat defender in conflict. Chigakonkwo has leverage on Pete Werner, so the corner stays underneath, and Spears runs this wheel route off the jet motion, and nobody picks him up. Again, it's a tough throw rolling out to his left, but there's so much room for error. He could have underthrown this inside, and Spears still might have scored a touchdown. And then last play, this is another one that should have been intercepted. Marshawn Lattimore's getting depth, so Tannehill thinks the flat route's gonna be open, but he makes a quick break out of his pedal and gets in the passing window. So the big conversation after this game is how long of a lease should Ryan Tannehill have? I do think this was an outlier performance, even if Tannehill's regressed from what he's been over the last few years, I still expect him to be better than what he showed week one. But this shotgun heavy offense doesn't really play to his strengths. He's never been great at sitting in the pocket, picking apart defenses. He's much more of an under center player play action shot quarterback, and athletically, he doesn't seem to be at 100%. Watching him try to maneuver the pocket, it looks like he's moving in quicksand. So it's really gonna come down to wins and losses. If and when the Titans are out of realistic playoff contention, I would definitely put in Willis or Levis, because you gotta have some idea of what you have in those two before you get to the off season. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.